How adorable is the studio? Love a good snowfall. God, look how pretty. Just love things blanketed in white. Just so still, except for the drip hitting on the sandbox over there. And how's my girl? <laughs> She's loving it out here. We can't keep her inside today. <laughs> this is Rinka. She is our mass, uh, Malamute Husky. Rinka! Yeah! She doesn't want anything to do with us today. She just wants to be out here. I have to show you the view from inside the studio. This is what we get to look at on snow days. It's like we're in our own little snow globe. Gorgeous. Well, we had a problem. <laughs> Looks like my thermal couple failed and we didn't reach quite to cone five. Cone five is 2167. So let's hope this turned out okay. If not, it will be refiring it after I replace the thermal couple. Hi guys. So I got an update. Didn't have surgery on the 30th. Um, this is kind of crazy, but they lost my body parts. So apparently FedEx delivered them. They're custom made by a CT scan. Um, and uh, he left them outside the hospital when they're supposed to be signed for. And um, they walked off. So surgery got canceled the day of surgery within hours of going in. So good thing they didn't cut into me first. So it's been postponed till the 15th of um, December. So, which left me kind of, I mean, my life was taken care of, right? I mean, I had everything taken care of and was hoping to have it on the 30th so that I would be over the worst of it by Christmas. Now I'll be in the thick of it for Christmas. So it is what it is. But um, let's just hope nothing else happens with this surgery. The surgery that I had in March, not only was I awake for the whole thing, the hammering, the sawing, the bone saw. Um, they also burned me with a cauterizing tool um, on the back of my um, calf that they didn't even notice until um, the physical therapist unwrapped all the bandages. It took three months to heal that burn. It was a really deep burn. And then the surgery didn't work. And now we're doing, now the body parts walk off. I mean, it's such a crap show. Don't quite, know what to think. I don't know if the universe is telling me, you know what, better not. Granted, this is a new doctor. I did not go with the old doctor. The old doctor ended up retiring, interesting enough. So anyway, there's the saga for that. <laughs> so that's what I'm dealing with. So we're going to go ahead and film and um, just keep going on. I'm, you know, I don't like to stay down for long. I'm not, um, I'm actually a dangerous person if I have to stay down. So um, I'm much, much happier being busy. So we are unloading a kiln and the Christmas trees that I just put up, some of them are in here, but we had a problem with the firing. So a uh, thermal coupler um, is, what's it say, failed. So uh, it's time to change that. I knew I was getting ready to change something. When your kiln starts taking a lot longer to fire, you're either got thermal coupler problem or you've got some element issues that you're going to be looking at. And of course, Christmas would be the month that um, everything starts failing on the kiln, right? <laughs> anyway, that's just kind of how it goes. Luckily, I have a thermal coupler and I will be changing that out. And uh, fingers crossed that um, the elements stay good till at least January and then we can get her all heated back up again. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to... Open the kiln and lower you down. So at first glance, this doesn't look too bad. Um, we got close to, um, this is a cone five firing. I actually need to take my jacket off. It's cold out here, but you start moving around and doing stuff that get heated up. So this was a cone five firing. Sorry, I don't need to put my finger in place of the camera, but I wanted to kind of straighten me out here. Um, it was supposed to be cone five with a 13 minute hold. It got to 2127. Uh, cone five is 2167. So we're only looking at 40 degrees. So fingers crossed, right? So let's go ahead and start with some of these. They might need a refiring. 
the glaze is um, a little rough. So the worst shelf is probably going to be my top and my bottom. So we might want to, it's fine, it's vitrified and everything, but the glaze could be a little shinier. It's kind of a more of a matte. These are um, Pottery by MAC, M-A-K. These are hers that she hand paints. Love this one, love it. Well, this one's adorable too, but I love all the lights, so. And then we've got a bunch of ornaments in here. <clears throat> this is actually the top of a butter dish um, to um, Avery, one of my students that moved to Arizona, came back to visit, and she's boho pottery. Um, sure miss that girl. <laughs> anyway, she made a few things while she was here, so we've been firing them. The base for that was in another kiln. And these are Nightcraft Co. These are ornaments. They are um, um, hollow inside, and she's um, scraffitoed mountain scenes on them. And I do believe she's going to go bluster these two for ornaments. They're adorable. And then this one, she just did the stroke and coats on. And she left the back just raw clay on glaze. This is another one of Nightcraft Co's. She does these um, geode mugs. And so she's going to, this is an ornament. And she'll be gold blustering this too. We'll have a gold luster fire, I hope, this week. So we'll see. And this is on the speckled buff, which we started uh, using. I'm not sure whose this is. Oh, Pottery by Mac. So she's waxed out the design and then just put the color on it. Very cute, very cute. And then this is one of her little ornaments too. All right. These guys were the ones I was worried about because it's pretty much my last um, big firing, probably. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Surgery might get canceled again if they can't. Manufacture the body parts. I'm not sure where they're coming from. Minnesota, I think. Um, anyway, this is a technique that um, Mickey um, Pottery Nightcraft Co is playing with and she's actually marbling it as she glazes it. It's really cool what she's coming out with. This is just on a bowl. This is on the lid of a butter dish. She's doing some amazing things with this technique. So maybe we can get her to do a video on that. We'll see. This is also um, Nightcraft Co. And this is the Terra Red by Aardvark, which we are in love with. And this is just a single dip of the Arctic Blue. I don't like Arctic Blue. This is Clayscape's Arctic Blue, but on this red, I'm in love with it. So she had a couple of little wine cups, big wine cups, <laughs> or big tea cups. Those would hold an awful lot of wine. <laughs> Maybe eggnog. They'd be good for eggnog. So I've got a stilt stuck to my shelf. And it looks like I have some running down there. Okay, so these are the mugs that I did. You know what? They're going to need to get re-fired. That one is anyway. So um, Jessica Putnam Phillips did a class on using the sand bow um, under glaze transfers. And I know a lot of us potters who are members of Clay Share Crime are making these. Anyway, I twisted um, two coils to make the handle and then painted this to make it look like a candy cane. I used cranberry from Clayscapes on the inside and I dipped the rim in cream but this one um, didn't get a, enough coverage, I guess. I think my cranberry might be a little thin. So we'll see how many of these 
Um, I hate to refire things that have um, transfers on them because a lot of times they go blurry on me. And so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what I decide to do. I kind of wish I had done the um, V-mix on these, but that's okay. It'll work. So here's another one. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. So yeah, I need to, I need to, I put cream on the, on the rim. Yeah, I need to thicken that clay up. But they did, they turned out cute. So I basically did <clears throat> the women with Merry Christmas and the men with Ho Ho Ho. <clears throat> They're for my kids for Christmas. I try to, <clears throat> I like doing um, a Christmas mug. Um, and my kids won't watch this, so <laughs> they won't see it. So they're too busy. They're not gonna watch it. Yeah, I need to do another dip of the, looks like all of them. Either that or it's because the firing didn't get hot enough. It could be that too. It got hot enough to, um, Vitrify the clay, so I don't have to worry about that. But might have some problems with the glaze. Not, not um, performing as well as it should. I really like that cream on the cranberry. Another reason I wish I had done these in B mix. But that's all right. It's you know, it's done. They're done. And so, oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, she's going to love this. This is a Nightcraft Co. And it has something to do with Lord of the Rings tree. Anyway, beautiful. She hand painted that on there. And this is with the Arctic Blue on the Terra Red. She's got a couple of them in here. This one um, dripped all over the shelf. But she'll be able to, I'll be able to clean that up. She'll be able to clean this part up. I'll clean the shelf. I tell you, if you um, teach, if you have a working studio and you're teaching, you need these advancer shelves. They save you so much time um, cleaning up after students who might be a little heavy handed with the glaze. <laughs> yeah, you won't ruin your shelves. So this is another tree that I made. I actually didn't show it, but if you watch the uh, fairies where I did the skirt with three hearts, I basically just did different size hearts and stacked them on each other. All right, so here's one of the trees that I did into the luminaries and this is blue spruce. And what I love about blue spruce is that it's like it's frosty, you know? It's like that perfect blue spruce color and the where it uh, breaks and does different things, it's like it's been hit with ice crystals. So I just, yeah, I can't wait to see this with some lights in it. Somebody asked me if I wouldn't show how I did this. So we'll see. I have a couple of extra days. <laughs> I got another 10 days before supposedly going to get surgery again. So we'll see if it actually happens. All right, so this one is one that I added a bunch of sprigs to and just did it in white. It actually turned out pretty cool. Uh, a lot of the holes ended up getting covered, but that's okay. There's a lot of them that are open, so it won't matter. It's kind of cool. Okay, so this one is the spruce blue and I tried um, something different. I dip a lot of my glazes and this is dipped. Actually it's poured. <laughs> poured the glaze on it. And then I went back and scraped off the glaze into the bucket on the edges and then brushed on the cream. So I would get a little bit more white on there. I just kind of wanted to see how it worked. And yeah, it worked. It's not quite as white as I wanted. If I had done a B-mix clay, it probably would be. But this should look really good on um, stilts too. So 
All right, and here's the big tree, and I just did um, this one in the spruce blue, just poured the spruce blue over it. And this is the one that we showed in the video. And I love how that glaze just highlights where it breaks and just goes frosty. So this is gonna look really cool. Blue is one of my favorite colors, and it's such a pretty blue-green. Okay, so this guy is for an upcoming class. I actually did this on VMAX, and I did a couple of different techniques that I'll explain about in the class. But I basically rolled lace in it, then I put white underglaze. Actually, I didn't do white underglaze. Since this is VMAX, I first did iron oxide over the whole thing so that it looked like weathered wood. And then um, in the texture, I put uh, white underglaze. I did do the cream on top and on top of the chimney. And uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So, little red door. That turned out kind of cute. Okay, so this one ran a bit. <laughs> so I've got some cleanup. Another Christmas tree, and it was done the same way with the hearts, but I moved the hearts around and I put balls in between the hearts to kind of raise it up so it wasn't so squatty. But I think I like the squatty one better. You'll have to let me know which one you like better. Here. Out of the two, I think I like the squatty one, this one, better than this one. So, no, I don't think I do. I do like this one. Okay, so Pottery by Mac again. She does a bunch of D&D &D mugs. She does very well with her D&D &D mugs. It's really interesting that she's so into D&D &D when I was dating um, my husband back in the 80s. He was really big into D&D. &D. So, more of those. So yeah, reach out to her on Nightcraft Co. on Instagram if you're looking for something for Christmas. She's done some really interesting things in this firing. This is one of her hand-painted ones. Looks like a sea serpent. Is it Nessie? <laughs> to me that looks like Nessie from Loch Ness. Cool! I didn't even know what was on there. And here's some whales. She's so talented. She can just sit down and draw these things. It's crazy. And then these are also hers. And she does all the hand painting on these too. And I do believe she's gold lustering these. She's got three of them. She's probably gonna hit the diamonds or the stars. Nice cappuccino mugs. This has got to be a Pottery by Mac. So, and the clay is raw here. So she's taped it off and then um, probably dipped it and, or she could have brushed it, but this is a pretty nice even coat. So she probably dipped it and then took off the tape. Some more wine cups or big tumblers with the uh, um, um, dinosaurs on them <laughs> before, no, before <laughs> when they have flesh, after. <laughs> so maybe they are wine cups. After you drink one of these, you feel like one of these. <laughs> okay, so I also made, Okay, so we're down into the middle of the kiln where it tends to get hotter. No, nope, we still have some. Well, no, that's fine. So I made little ones for my grandkids. Aren't they cute? So cute. Oops, a couple more. Super cute. So technically, with those done, my um, pottery gifts are done. So this is... Um, 
Bryn, he's an amazing potter who um, needs help with or needs access to a kiln. And so I do rent my kiln out um, and, and discharge minimal for firings and so forth. So this is one of his. It's absolutely stunning. And I don't know, he mixes a lot of his own glazes. So I'm not sure what this is or even what the clay, clay is. But he'll have a few things in here. Ooh, pretty. Oh my goodness gracious. And nothing in here is even mine and it's so pretty. Golly, I tell you, my students are so talented. Just, cow, the creativity and the talent coming out of that little studio just makes me overjoyed. Just overjoyed. Okay, where do I even start? <laughs> All right, let's start with this. This is a pottery by, no, not, not Craft Co. This is that marbling effect. She wanted kind of a Saturn planetary type of look with this um, chip and dip bowl. Boy, did she nail it. So she's got black on the outside. And these are satin glazes. I believe they're satin, satin glazes by Amico. And then she does this technique to marble. Stunning, absolutely stunning. All right, so these are Pottery by Mac, and she's used the Sandbow under glaze transfers on these. Aren't they gorgeous? Just gorgeous. Here's another one of those marble effects um, that Mickey from Nightcraft Co. is doing. Stunning. Just, just love it. Such art. All right, these are hand painted by Mac, pottery by Mac for um, a couple of their fur babies. <laughs> They're so cute. She's so talented. Man, both Mac and Mickey, my M's. Boy, can they paint. Then I've got a couple of random um, things down here. Got a couple of more slugs for Hannah. <laughs> I didn't load this part of the kiln, so I'm not sure what's in here. Another mug by um, Pottery by Mac, and this one's by Bryn. I will find his Instagram handle so you can check him out. He does amazing pieces. All right, this one might not have gotten might need to go to a higher temp. It might need to be refired. This is uh, Nightcraft Co. with that marbling technique, but it didn't quite do the clay body showing up. Maybe, I don't know, either she didn't get enough on it or um, it didn't get hot enough. So, so far though, we've had a pretty good track record of what's going on in this kiln, considering it didn't actually reach full temp, full cone five. These are Pottery by Max. Again, the flowers are waxed on. She paints on the flowers first, and then she dips them. <laughs> Just so fun. Another one done with that, um, the tape and glazing and the clay's raw. And then this one, she's added a bunch of black polka dots. And this one's just a plain white one. Hmm. Interesting. We don't get usually plain white mugs out of the kiln. And this one is uh, Pottery by Max again. And she's hand painted the cherries on it. This one's actually done, this cappuccino's actually done um, by Nightcraft Co. Mickey. So she might have plans for this. Knowing her, it's not going to stay this way. <laughs> She'll have plans for it. She does a lot of um, multimedia type stuff with um, her pottery too. Okay, bottom shelf. Well, these are cool. So these are that same 
technique that she was doing on that mug that I didn't think got hot enough. But these look great. So, very fun. Her interpretation of a candy cane. All right, and we've got a bunch of mug pottery by Mac all done with the tape. She tapes little squares and then paints them, glazes them. Another four of those. These ones she actually has some flowers into the squares. Very fun, very fun. This is all on the um, buff speckle by Laguna. Okay. So I believe this was a refire for Brynn. We had some pinholing in the last kiln firing, and so we just refired it. Really pretty. She's got a couple in here. So, looks like it took care of all the pinholes on this one too. Love a combination of blue and green. Absolutely love it. Not sure what he's put on this. Looks like an ox blood type of glaze. Cool, very cool. And I'm not sure on this one either. It's probably a turquoise. Like I said, he mixes his own glazes. So. I'm not sure what he's using. This one ran a little bit. This one I know had seed weed on it. So, really pretty. All right, looks like we got a honey pot. <laughs> Still doing honey pots. This is Pottery by Mac. Hmm, again, I don't think the clear. I might have to reglaze and refire these guys. Interesting that so far as I've noticed, it's that cranberry, which kind of acts like a celadon. And uh, the clear glaze, everything else looks pretty good. And this is Nightcraft Co's. And I'm not sure what she's put in there. It's a really pretty green on this um, dark clay. Really pretty. All right. A couple of more ornaments. This is um, a bell clapper that Hannah Gone to Pot is doing along with, well, and then that's her slug. She didn't, she has a few more pieces in here, but she didn't have a, an awful lot in this one. This is one of hers. I believe this is the Arctic Blue, and yet we've got a bunch of pinholing in this one. So we'll set that aside. I'm definitely going to go in for a refire. This one right next to it, same thing, plus the glaze ran. So we'll refire that one too. And this one. <laughs> it ran and pinholed. You can see those pinholes. It did really bad. So this is marbled clay, the B mix and the Terra Red together. They both have the same shrink rate, so you can marble them. So that's it for the kiln opening. So some great ones, some not so great. And, uh, but overall, not too bad when you get the, when you come out in the morning to hear your kiln beeping, that is your heart sinking. <laughs> So not too bad considering uh, it could have been a lot worse. So um, it's kind of what happens and for some reason it always happens in December. Anyway, hope you're having a great one and uh, we'll see you in the next one.